We're going to talk about the greatest embarrassment to Christianity. I have to apologize sometimes when I'm sharing the gospel with people because they bring up a phenomena occurring in Christianity that they understand is a pagan practice that takes place in psychology classes, takes place in other religions, and Christians claim it's supernatural. And so it nullifies all of our claim to the supernatural. And that's this ridiculous thing of what they call tongues, as if it were the New Testament gift of tongues. So we're going to talk about that. I looked up some videos on YouTube. Listen. It's off to work we go, we go. Uh, now, that's not a language. Any ling linguist, and my daughter went to linguist college and got a degree in it. TJ went to linguist school, got a degree in it. And uh, both of them went off to learn foreign languages. And in these linguistic schools, you learn that there's about 500 sounds that can be made by the human mouth, and different languages use different parts of the mouth to make different sounds. And so in order to speak another language and do it without a lot of accent, you have to learn to change your mouth and use it the way they do. And so if you hear an Arabic-speaking person or Greek or German or Spanish, you'll notice the total different sound that they make. Uh, like this woman right here, that's English words with English accents. They're not really words at all. It, it doesn't in, involve a full span of the alphabet of the consonants and the vowels. It's very limited. It's baby gibberish, which is absolutely meaningless. And no linguist would ever consider that to be a language in any way whatsoever. So we're going to look at what the scripture says about this. We're going to look at some more video, and I hope you get a clear perspective so that you stop doing this embarrassing thing and start worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Okay, where did this thing all begin? Acts 2, 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Notice it says other tongues. The word tongues, look it up every time it's used in the Bible. You'll find it is the word language. The word language doesn't appear in the Bible. The word tongues appears. So a tongue is a language, a particular unique language that's spoken that people understand. So they spake with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, in our own language, wherein we were born? So they were amazed. This was a promise prophesied to be a sign to Israel that with other tongues he would speak to them. He would speak to them, not that they'd speak in the air, not that they would jabber some uh, incoherent syllables, but that they would speak a language and glorify God. So on the day of Pentecost, many languages were present, and they all understood the gospel that was being delivered to them that day. Isaiah 66, 18, For I know that their works and their thoughts, it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues. You'll find it used over and over in the Old Testament, nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. So he's gathering a tongue. It's not a tongue. It is a language group that he is gathering. Now, the gift of tongues or languages was clearly a gift of communicating intended to facilitate the spreading of the gospel to those who had previously been excluded by the Jews. Now, there's a word in the Bible called, a Greek word called glossa. It's uh, the word for language or the word that's found the many times the word tongues appears. Now, modern people use the term glossasia, uh, which is not found in Scripture, not one time. Some of your modern corrupted translations will translate tongues glossasia, which is a grave disservice to the Word of God, a great error. Now, what is the medical definition of glossasia? And uh, this, is, this is found in medical journals, medical dictionaries, medical books, because it's a common experience for people having psychological trouble or emotional turmoil to speak in tongues. It's a profuse and often emotionally charged speech that mimics coherent speech, but is usually unintelligible to the listener 
and that is uttered in some states of religious ecstasy, ecstasy and in some schizophrenic states. If you just knew how common this jabbering in another language is among mentally unstable people, you'd be very embarrassed. Now, ecstatic language was a common form of worship in pagan temples. It was well established in ancient Bablos in 1100 B.C., 1100 years before the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost, the languages in which they spoke had nothing to do with these heathen practices by virtue of the fact that it was an intelligent language that was understood. Now, Plato in 429 to 347 B.C. mentions it as a phenomena in his time, way before Christ. He tells us that a person under divine possession received utterances and visions that the receiver did not understand. If you will look up all of the pagan and ancient religions, you will find that nearly every one of them give examples of what today would be called speaking in tongues. It was just a common practice among heathen. Now, I used to think when I was young, because I, all, I, I followed the Spirit of God, but I didn't understand a lot of things. I hadn't done a lot of study on it. And I was around a lot of people jabbering in what they call tongues. And the Spirit of God was clear to me that that was not a gift of the Holy Spirit that they were exercising. And now I've experienced gifts of the Spirit. I know what they are. I know the supernatural. And I knew that that was not one of them, because many of the people I knew that spoke in tongues, like one queer hitting on me, uh, told me that he spoke in tongues, that he uh, got his gift from a Episcopalian priest. And he said he and the Episcopalian priest had sexual relationships along with other Episcopalian priests. This is in Memphis. Now, he may have been lying, but this is what he said. And so he had this gift that he would jabber in tongues uh, before and after the process of having sex with other men. So... Uh, <laughs> You know, a few experiences like that, seeing a bunch of uh, sodomites swaying and singing Amazing Grace uh, and s who speak in tongues is enough to put you off pretty permanently, I suppose. So Plato mentions it. And then these utterances were sometimes accompanied by physical healing of people present. Virgil in 70 to 19 B.C. tells us that the Sabine priest when in prayer united her spirit with the god Apollo and spoke in strange, unknown tongues. So the thing that you, some of you Christians are doing today is a, it's not the devil. I used to think it was the devil. I thought it was Satan doing it. And I know there's some good, sincere Christians that are born again and love God. They've just fallen into this practice, and it's time for you to chunk it. All right? Uh, Rhenius, 114 to 202 BC, uh, AD, in his work Against Heresies, uh, he wrote a, this is an early church father writing against heresies, speaks out against the abuse of ecstatic utterances that often lead to violent emotions and loss of chastity. Christianity came to a heathen world throughout southern Europe and on up far as Britain, actually, and over to India. And so it encompassed and incorporated a lot of pagan religions. And many of those people continued their pagan practices. They had spoken in ecstatic utterances, glossosia, uh, before they became Christians. And uh, they continued afterwards and interpreted that as the gift that came on the day of Pentecost, which, of course, it was not. Now, Mormons, like Joseph Smith, spoke in tongues. This is a quote. Father Smith would call upon some illiterate brother to rise and speak in tongues in the name of Jesus Christ. The order was given. This is, quote, arise upon your feet, speak or make some sound, continue to make sounds of some kind, and the Lord will make a tongue or a language of it. So they created their own gibberish. They didn't even need to be hypnotized to do that. Mormon leader Brigham Young also spoke in tongues and interpreted his own messages. Now, I want you to see some of the uh, stuff that's available on YouTube. You can go back and look at it for yourself. But let's look at this woman again. Let every 
he he ha ha ho ho handa ha ay ha rabasata mahandariya kasa you hear that rhythm that beat that's in there that's a pagan practice it is designed to hypnotize it's a hypnotic beat brought in for your worship will rise above it your worship will rise above it for your worship will rise above it now that that that's what you call <laughs> an ecstatic utterance but at this point this woman is not even in a hypnotic state uh, nothing uh, really uh, is going on she is just repeating words that she learned and will say the same thing over and over again meeting after meeting meaningless jumble mumble jumble now here's a real language listen to this <laughs> You see the difference? It's a language that has it's multifaceted with many uh, vowels and consonants put together in an order that if you didn't know the language, a linguist could look at it, break it down, and say this is a noun, this is a verb, this is a preposition, this is an article, and pretty soon be able to interpret the language. No one has ever taken this gibberish called tongues no one's ever been able to look at it and find any language structure in it no one has ever been able to look at it and break it down and find that it fits some language in the world there you should be able to take google's translation submit a real gift of the spirit speaking in another language and google would interpret it for you if not google then some more um uh, uh, advanced or other computer program but it's not a language and it'll never be interpreted as such now i want to show you something here how this comes about this this is a hypnotist can i ask he's uh, just chosen these 12 students out of the media. audience and he right has examined yeah, them to see which go. ones are and most vulnerable like to hypnotizing that let me explain what you're about to see and why we're doing this Obviously, I was going through the audience looking for good visualizers. And as I said before, when you're in a group of teenagers who are very open-minded and haven't spent a whole lot of years becoming cynics, you tend to get some really good subjects. These folks, however, appear to be extremely good visualizers. They have an ability to internalize a picture quickly and easily, which is what a hypnotist is looking for. A hypnotist wants to see, can a person take a picture and transmit that picture into action? If you invite them to imagine holding 100 balloons do you get the arm autonomously rising? Let me explain what autonomous means. Most of these folks afterwards, if you ask them, are likely to tell you, I don't feel like I lifted my arm on my own. I felt like it was being pulled up by those balloons. That's known as an autonomous motion. And uh, you, know, you, you pick up over the years how to recognize that. So I've identified these folks as being very good visualizers and I've invited them to join me on stage. So here he is, he's identified these people as being susceptible and chose them out of audience. Now, there were many, many, if you would look at the earlier part of that, there are many, many who were so susceptible. In fact, hypnotists say about half of the people in a, in a group of people like that can be hypnotized. And they say anyone can, uh, but it's very easy for about half of them. Okay. Your He's going to put them to sl sleep Ray? now. Watch this. Are you hypnotized, Ray? I think so. You don't think so? You think so? Sleep. Let's find out. There you go. Loosen, 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 deep asleep. Loosen, limp, loosen. Limp. So here's here's a shot of him after having gotten them hypnotized. He just waves his arm, and they all pass out at one time. You'll see hypnotists doing that over and over again. They'll tell you I mean, that you they first condition each one of them, and they use hand gestures and words and symbols that the people learn subconsciously to recognize so after a few minutes all they have to do is snap their fingers or wave their hand or make some indication and the people knowing what is expected of them follow suit and so you'll see the hypnotist after a moment waving like this and the whole crowd just passes out they get slain in the spirit I mean, you don't have to here we are watch old Benny Hinn here do his hypnotic stuff
Take it. Take it. How embarrassing. Can you picture Jesus doing that? Jesus went up on a mount and he slew the people. They fell down on the ground. Can, how preposterous. Okay, here's where he hypnotizes a girl and tells her that she can speak Italian. <laughs> and watch what happens. Uh, she thinks she's speaking Italian. And let's look at another one. Now he's going to hypnotize the girl sitting beside her and tell her that she speaks Martian. Watch this. Now, here these two girls are thinking they're speaking Martian. And all it took was one hypnotist a few minutes to get them in that condition. All right, here, here's another hypnotist doing something similar. Look at me, look at me, right hand. Loosen it up. Don't make me confess no unsolved crimes now. You're not going to. <laughs> loosen up your arm. Loosen up your arm. Just let it go. No, let, just follow my fingers. Look down, look down, look down, look down, look down, look down. Sleep. That's it. Let it go. Let it go. So in a moment... When I count to three, Dark Shark, NASA is planning on going to Mars. And we've got you here, our first Martian, when I count to three. It's one, two, three. Just sit up, open your eyes. Hey there, our first Martian. What's your first impression of the planet Earth here? Me, no, me, no, no. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Me, see, cake, a breakfast. It doesn't sound good. Did you like it? Itty, bitty, 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 bitty. What, what's the typical Martian meal going to be? Whoa. Okay, what, what did he just say? Errol. Uh, oh, man. I don't know. He has to say it again. I didn't hear it. Say it I one more time. Yeah. There you go. And uh, <laughs> what do you think of the women on the planet here? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now he tells this guy he can translate any language. Look what happened. First thing I'm touching now. First thing I'm touching now. You are a translator. You can translate any language, even alien language. You are the best translator in the world. Nod your head, you understand? First one touching now. So now we're going to have the gift of interpretation of tongues. Planet far, far away. You don't speak English. One, three, eyes open. Hey, what's your name? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how old are you? Yeah. Uh, sir. You understand many languages? All of them. Okay. Uh, can you do a little translating for us? I'd love to. Okay. Uh, um, where you come from? Do you have dogs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we can stop there with that. So 
They think they're speaking in Martian and interpreting in Martian. That's what the human brain is capable of. Now, I want you to see this. This is someone explaining how they got this modern gift of tongues. I have been praying in the Spirit for a few months now after being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Um, and it took me about seven years to receive the evidence of speaking in tongues. But I did it. Exactly the kind of thing that you see with the hypnotist. Okay, here's a guy that's going to tell us how you can get the gift. Now, this is not really hypnotism with this guy. This is not um, an emotional, ecstatic utterance. This is not glossosia. All this is is just fake that comes from practice and messing with your own mind. Listen to him. So you ready? Anybody could do this. Yeah. So here we go. Abba. Abba Sala. Derese. Que le masa en de seque, de se que le le masata, en verete, de se ele me seque, en vechete que le masa, en verotu su crini mata, cala la masa que te quereche, en vese que le le masa. Now, I'm feeling that. I'm not worried about you. I'm feeling that because that's between me and God. Now, so you can you can see that 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 is not the gift of the Holy Spirit of speaking another language to someone so they'll understand the gospel. This is a guy messing with his own psychic, uh, trying to stir up an emotion within himself. Now here's a kid telling you how to do it too. Watch this. Now, if you believe you receive it, just keep your eyes closed and just put your eyes onto God and open up your mouth, open up your tongue. Le 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 bo 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 she. It's going to sound very weird. It's going to sound like mutters or just ba ba ba. When I first started out praying in tongues, it was very small syllables. And then it, as I prayed more often every single day, it got more deeper and it got more developed. So wherever you are, by faith, if you believe you have it, just open up your mouth. You say, Gabe, what do I say? Well, let God do that. Just open up your mouth. Open up your syllables. Don't be afraid of what comes out. And again, don't think, is this me? Is this God? No. <laughs> so the kid is showing you how to, again, just trick yourself into think you're doing something. That's not even glossosia. That's not the, he's not hypnotized. All that is is just practice making noises until you get learn enough of them to get them down into a, a flowing, and uh, then you can go into public and you can do that and make people think you're speaking a language. Missionaries, I have uh, missionaries I support in Africa, and they said one of the biggest problems they have with getting people to Jesus in Africa is the fact that Benny Hinn has been there ahead of them and got the people thinking that knowing Christ is all about having access to more money, about God giving you something, about these ecstatic utterances, and about supernatural power. But they don't have any supernatural power. They don't, they pretend that with these ecstatic utterances, and they're not getting wealthy, they're staying poor, they're staying sick, and they're dying without Christ because they think they've already been exposed to Christianity. And so I have friends who are missionaries in Africa who've won literally millions of people to Christ without going through all of this silly nonsense, but it's been very difficult for them. So it's an embarrassment to Christianity. Watch this. I'm going to walk and stand over there and the Son of God is going to come and stand right here. I'm going to invite him to come and stand right here. And one by one, you this area right He here. told them where they'd be falling out and so they are hypnotized. Notice how, how he fell and caught himself. He wasn't even hypnotized. He was faking it. He's faking it too. So, <laughs> so sometimes the people just have to fake it. One final point here. 
People will explain their ecstatic utterances by saying that it's not the tongue of men they're speaking, it's the tongues of angels. Uh, angels must be retarded if that's the way they talk. Look at what the scripture actually says about that. The only time it speaks of the language of angels is here. 1 Corinthians 31, 1. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Now, these are exaggerations. Though I speak with the tongue of men and angels. He's not saying he has. He's not saying anyone does speak with the tongue of angels. He's exaggerating. He says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries. Does he understand all mysteries? No. And though I have all knowledge. Does he have all knowledge? No. And though I have all faith. Does he have all? No. So I can remove mountains. Does he ever move one? No. Though I speak with the tongue of men and angels. So all of these statements are, are superfluous. They're overstatements. They're exaggerations of saying, even if I could do that, even if I went that far and didn't have charity, I would still be nothing. So there is nothing in the scripture that says that anyone is speaking the language of angels. This is the only reference, and it's a statement that if one could do so, then, and had not charity, he'd be nothing. So building a whole doctrine on something like that is extremely flimsy, not to mention the outcome is predictable by psychologist, by hypnotist, and by primitive religions. So let's stop this silly stuff. Let's stop embarrassing Christ and the church with this nonsense and get down to loving our neighbor, walking in righteousness and holiness, and acting with a bit more dignity than this silly stuff going on, okay? So I got to get out and do some gardening. And so I'm, it's a beautiful day. I'm going to uh, leave here and go out and turn some ground, have some fun. See you later.